Hello everyone, I'm Sam Caston and welcome to NAC. Tonight we're here for Girls Varsity Action. Be the NAC Bobcats going against the Mariah Vikings. For the, uh, the NAC Bobcats in goal is Deb Morrison. Number 7 is Tiffany Leonard. 23, Darcy Rabdo, April Miller is 3. Kelly Felch. Kylie Felch, I think it is, is 2. Amanda Chase is 12. Ryan Rabideau, 22. Angela Curry is 8. Sarah Dupuy is 4. Eli Pajo is 16. Jamie Dicos, 18. Jamie Labarge, 5. Casey Begor is 14. Cara. Uh, I'm not even going to try that one there. Cowan Hour, number 10. Katie McNeil, 13. Erin LaBear, 21. Janice Miner, as of the other night, was injured. I don't know if she's back in. And Nicole Noop, uh, Nephew is number six. For the Vikings, who arrived a little bit late. That's why we're not starting on time. Stacy Anderson is in gold. Melissa Baker is number eight. Abby Beggs is number nine. Stacy Carr, four. Tiffany Cutting is number 15. Jackie Julski is 23. Megan Gilbo, 19. Melissa Harvish is 3. Robin Johnson is 17. Trisha King, 12. Darcy McDougal, 14. Uh, Jen Miron is 16. Danielle Rabideau, 5. Liz Slattery, 21. Aaron Sprague, 13. And Jamie Trapasso is number 20. We'll be set for tonight's action in a few moments. We see that gentleman Bill Chase is here and we're hoping he comes up and does the play-by-play -play for us. I hope the next voice you hear is that of Bill Chase. Okay, we're rolling here. Hometown Cable High School Soccer Action. This is the opening game for the Northern Adirondack Lady Bobcats here. They're hosting the Mariah Vikings. Mariah is a very young team, and I anticipate most of the action for the first half being down on the other end, and the second half be right here in front of us. This is Bill Chase and my cameraman, Calvin Castine. No, Sam Castine, excuse me. Calvin's uh, Calvin, uh, younger or older than you, Sam? Three years younger. Oh, he's the baby, ain't he? Is Gary, where's Gary in there? Gary's younger than Calvin. Oh, and Gary's the baby. I should have figured. Oh, <laughs> Darcy Rabideau, first shot. That's the wide of the goal. Sam's giving you the lineups already. And uh, I wonder, well, is Calvin doing a game today? Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to be a little more wider awake than he was. Uh, I listened to a couple games he did there. Every five minutes or so, he might go, yeah, and the green's got the ball. What was the matter with him? He was looking for you. Jeez, I'm <laughs> crawl, them JV games. <laughs> The boys, I watched them before I give them to Gilmore. I wanted to see the goals. Who's that? April Miller with the ball. Miller goes back to Rabideau. Shot. It's in the net. And it's one to nothing. First uh, minute and less than a minute and a half. 38-42 left on the clock. And Darcy Rabideau opens up the Bobcat regular season scoring with a goal from a pass from April Miller. Well... The Bobcats, in the first minute and 20-odd seconds or so there, have scored a goal. Up front, who do we got? April Miller's on a right wing. And uh, Sarah Dupree is over on the left side. April Miller with the ball. Bobcats opening up the season here against the Vikings. That's Jamie LeBaire putting a body on the ball. Rabbit with another shot on. And the goalkeeper, who's the goalkeeper? Stacy Anderson making a save. Mariah not fielding a JV team this year. I guess they got a modified team going. So, but numbers are down. I guess to Mariah, and this is a very young bunch talking to the athletic director from NAC. What's his name? Uh, can't think of it. Big <laughs> dummy guy. Oh, John Rabideau. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice talk. <laughs> He's telling me the numbers are down. And Mariah. Today's officials. Did you introduce the officials? No. Well, okay. 
We don't have to. Steve Reagan and uh, Gary Kaiser. Kaiser, he works for uh, Country Kitchen. If you ever need a donation out there, anybody in hometown cable, you know, hot dog rolls or something, call up Gary Kaiser. <laughs> you got a fundraiser going, you know? Get that Country Kitchen that don't make a donation. Donuts, don't they do? Donuts, all sorts of stuff. Something like Little Debbie? Yeah, Little Debbie. That surely isn't Little Gary, though. <laughs> it's out of bounds, and Mariah is down into Bobcat territory. It's a beautiful, sunny, cool day here, fall day. Nice day for a soccer game. A nice day for a soccer game. It's a pretty quiet crowd for NAC. Maybe one or two for Mariah here made the trip. Going by bus from Mariah to NAC is about a two-hour trip, isn't it? I would say so. This game, I think, started a little later than it was supposed to. Yeah. They got here late. Angela Curry gets it up to uh, Jamie LaBear. LaBear can't move it up the field, but it's a white throw. Amanda Chase, Tiffany Leonard, Eli Paja, and there's Eli out there. She must be. Just don't see where she's at. Here's Sarah Dupree across in the middle. April Miller, one move. Kylie Felt shot. Ooh, the left foot just going wide on the right side. Goal kick coming up. Miller gets the goal kick right back at him now. She goes back to. Who is that? Number 18 with the shot. Not quite sure. I don't have the Bobcat lineup here. You got it somewhere? I think so. Well, we'll figure it out. Tarsi Rabidou, she's got the ball after the goal kick. She gives it to Sarah Dupree. Dupree goes into the middle. Kylie Felt, she scores. Felt, she was in that left foot. A nice pass from Miller. That was, I mean, from uh, Dupree. Three uh, Viking defenders there. There we go. 18's Jamie Dekos. Well, there's somebody different back on defense for the Bobcats. But the Bobcats, in the first five minutes, have a two-goal lead already. Two to nothing on goals by Kylie Felch and Darcy Rabideau. We'll be back here on Hometown Cable in a minute. Well, Sam's not sure if he got the goal there, folks. But a nice pass from uh, Dupree to Felch. Digging for the lineup. He's digging for the lineup. And he had an itch, and he had to scratch it, and figured he'd get a shot of the crowd. Or not the crowd, the clouds. It was cold here yesterday. Northern that around that varsity boy scrimmaging in Messina. They pulled out a one nothing victory in that scrimmage, I believe. It was one nothing. Chris Brunell getting the goal. Any frost in line mountain? I don't think there was any frost. It got down into the high 30s, though, last night. Rabidou now with the ball again. Rabidou goes to Miller. Miller's on her right side. Miller taking her time. Shoots and scores. 3 0 with 34 16 left here in the first half. And Coach Boyer elects to empty the bench. And we'll be back. It's 3 0 Cats. Three different goal scorers. Okay, we're waiting for the kickoff here after the third goal. April Miller putting in the third goal. So it appears to be a, going to be a long season for the Mariah Vikings. <laughs> if you're going to base it on the first six minutes of the soccer they've played thus far. They were in the Saranac tournament and got beat by Saranac six to nothing. I know that in the semifinal game there. I don't know what they did in the consolation game. The Bobcats played in the Seton tip-off tournament and had a two-goal lead in the championship and ended up losing the game 3-2 to two to Seton. And the girls, I know, would love to have won that game and won the Seton tournament, but what it pretty much amounts to when you're playing in them preseason tournaments is just something to get you warmed up for the regular season, and that's where we are. Casey Begore. Scooting down the right side. Puts the ball into the middle. Amanda Chase back into the middle. And 
I believe it was Katie McNeil receiving a ball off in the head of Amanda Chase and she had to open left side but unable to put it in and it's a goal kick coming up. Amanda Chase, Angela Curry, Nicole Nephew and Jamie Decoffs are back on defense. Oh, it's off in um, one of the Vikings, so it's a corner kick for the Cats. Casey Begore's in the game. Uh, Kara Kokenauer went in. I don't know who else went in for the Cats. They had four or five subs. Nicole Nephew was one of them. Rabidou shoots, and it's wide. Well, got anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Today's my daughter's birthday. Amanda turned sweet 16. Did you? Yeah, Amanda, sweet 16 and never been kissed. If she has been, uh, I'm looking for the guy that did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anybody, you know, wish Amanda a happy birthday? A couple of weeks, I'm turning 40, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, if you want to... Send your cards and greetings to me. <laughs> you can send them courtesy of the hometown cable address. But no, we'll just send them to Kelvin or Sam. And I'll just collect them. <laughs> Gifts accepted. Uh, yeah, you know. Prefer to cash. <laughs> There's some people that didn't think I was going to live this long, you know. Oh, no? No. Thought somebody's gonna kill you? Or? Yeah, they thought somebody would kill me by now. <laughs> so I'm going to be the big 4-0. I'm not going to tell you the date. Somebody might be looking just to do me in on my birthday. It's this month then. Yeah, it's this month. Two weeks from tomorrow, actually. You figure it out yourself, you people out there. <laughs> but Gore with a shot on the right side, hustling to keep the ball in. Goal kick for the Cats coming up. Uh, Mariah, I believe, only got uh, 14 players, I think. So I only got three subs. Darcy Rabideau takes that into the chest. Kelkenauer. She kicks it off in a Viking defender. It should be a, yep, it's going to be a corner kick coming up for the Bobcats. Bobcats for the Varsity Boys will open up their regular season tomorrow night in Peru. Monday, the boys play at Seton under the lights. And the girls' varsity second game is down in Ticonderoga on Tuesday. There is Ryan Rabidou in front of the net and just putting it over the top of the goal. The Cats do hold a three-goal lead here. We've only played ten minutes of soccer. April Miller, Darcy Rabidou, and Kylie Feltz, the goal scorers. And my prediction pretty much thus far has been right on most of the play. 95% of those ten minutes have been down in the far end of the field. Be a lot easier second half. <laughs> yeah, maybe should have just moved the truck down. Agor on the right side. I don't believe Morrison has touched the ball, has she? Debbie Morrison? Nope. Debbie Morrison. I'm wondering who she is. That's the Bobcat goalie. <laughs> there she is. Right there. She's lucky it's not cold though. Yeah. Well, yeah. She'd been here yesterday. She'd been freezing. It was cold here yesterday. Well, the sun's come out, warmed up a little bit. It's supposed to warm up this weekend. There's Amanda Chase putting it back in. It's not a real good game to actually the Cats. Brian Boye was a little a coach there. is a little concerned that opening up uh, this game and he knew what the kind of opponent was coming in. And then next Tuesday he's got to go down to Ticonderoga and it's always tough down there in Ticonderoga. You can end up doing things in this game that you can get away with and when you play with a tougher opponent you're not going to get away with. Boye, biggest job here I think today is to keep them mentally into the game. Jamie Dekos covering the Mariah player. She tried to move into the Bobcat end. She made a nice play there. Keeps on the ball, puts it up the right side. Begore to apply the pressure. She got there. Kara Kokenauer, now with the ball. 
Sends it in on goal, and the keeper, Anderson, picks it up. Anderson's punt. She gets it by Aaron LaBear. But Angela Curry pinching in. Puts it up for Kokenauer. Kokenauer, though, is called on the offsides. Sam Sanders, the guy that wants to play girls soccer. I don't know what school it is. I don't know if it's around here. But I know there was a guy that wanted to play, uh, I believe it was in Massachusetts or something, uh, wanted to play girls field hockey. and they, he, He's going to be able to. Field hockey has uh, always been a more or less a girl sport. It's nothing that's been really, I don't know if they ever played it around here or not. Nothing big up around here in this area. Lacrosse, that's played over in some of the schools like Messina and stuff. Yeah. And there's a rough sport, lacrosse. Yeah, very rough. And he whack at you with them sticks and everything. And a chase prevents the uh, Vikings from moving up the field. We did a couple of those across, across games and... Uh, Inside? Point, yeah. Uh, indoors, yeah. yeah. Chase with the left foot. Puts it down the left side. Kokenauer moving up on the Viking defense. It's kind of hard to even make out the Vikings numbers. Tell you who the girls are. Kokenauer... Gets it up to Chase. Chase. Oh, getting a little too excited. That should might be able to score a goal here on her birthday and overrun the ball. It's in the right. It's on the left side. Sarah Dupree back in the game. Kicks it out of bounds. Goal kick coming up. 26-08. Remember the Bobcats here have uh, they got the scoreboard that was put in place last year in memory of. Uh, Don Seguin, it's over on the school, sort of in an unorthodox position for the varsity field, but the fans and the referee, you know, you might have to turn your head a little bit. You can pick it up. Surely helps our case uh, here at Hometown Cable. I always know how much time left in the half. That's what I like about doing games with, with Seton and Saranac, Northeastern. Some places you do a game and how much time left? <laughs> Subs coming in. Kylie Belch and Darcy Rabbit will return. It's 25 minutes in the game, or in the half left. Ryan Rabbit and Amanda Chase come out. Okay, the Cats move it up again. Katie McNeil with the ball. goes Looking to go inside. Kokenauer now picks up the loose ball. She sends it into the left corner. Mariah trying to clear it up. Curry hustling there. Angela Curry. She keeps the pressure on for the Cats. Mariah trying to push it down the right side. Darcy Rabideau looking to cut off. The Mariah lineman there, she does, takes the ball away, tries to switch fields, unable to do so. Jamie Decos coming up to help out. Gets it up to Kokenauer. Kokenauer moving the ball up the left side. You know, one thing that impresses me about girls soccer, they seem to, girls are more willing to use both feet. And they, when they got to use the left foot, they will. Boys, they'll fight that. They're right-footed. They're going to fight it and put it over on their right foot, even if they're on the left side. Aaron LaBear to replace Katie McNeil. Everybody in the crowd is falling asleep over there. They're all leaning each on each other. And we can get them to do the wave or something. <laughs> Wake them up. Curry with a throw in far side of the field. We've got three goals here. Ball's out of bounds. Another white throw. White sub. Chase coming back in. She goes in for Curry. Curry has been hustling out there. Going to be a lot of playing time for everybody here for the Bobcats today. 
I'm already starting to yawn, even though I've had two cups of coffee here. Go back to Chase. Puts it up. On the little right side, or left side. Dupree and Kokenauer there. Steps around Viking Defender. Steps around Kokenauer, but runs out of real estate. How's that? We haven't used that one yet, have we? Mm, not this year, I guess. <laughs> Dupree going inside. LaBear. She can't con keep it under control. And a Viking little speedster here on the right side. Brings it up. Nicole Nephew. She cuts her off at a pass, but they go back. The half back. Morrison saying, maybe I'm going to touch the ball. But nope. It's kicked out of bounds. Amanda Chase quickly on a throw in a Kokenauer. Kokenauer goes inside. A little give and go attempt there by Dupree. Amanda Chase puts it up left wing and out of bounds. All the place stuck over there on the left side. Girl soccer. Well, the wind come up there, well, the wind's come up. But, you know, they switch the field more. Girls, they get caught, and both teams just seem to fall right into it. And they'll play on uh, one side of the field forever. Saving the grass on this side. I guess. Darcy Rabideau missed kicks. The Cole Nephew steps up and clears the ball for the Cats. Subs coming in, Curry. I thought she was saying Sarah. She is saying Sarah. Kara. Kokenauer was leaving. Sarah, Kara. Oh, well, coming down here to the game today, there was boy uh, some of that liquid uh, manure smell over here in Ellenburg. All right, that stuff that you, you open up the you even if you don't open up the windows, you wanna almost put you in a ditch. You know, there's somebody over there that does that in Northeastern. They seem to, around soccer season, they're doing their fields. Makes your old nose cool right up. Well, I was talking to, was asking a certain people there in regards to no gold in the uniform, you know. I already, I already told some of these school officials that I'm going to ask that question every time we see soccer here as we watch Rabideau get a second goal for this afternoon. Second goal for her. For her. Second goal for her. 2018 left and a half. We'll get back to no gold in the uniform after Mariah has their kickoff. Better not be claiming mileage, Reagan. Okay. Okay, four to nothing. Been had been oh might be twelve minutes since Cats last scored. Darcy Rabidou now has two. Number seventeen here. That's Johnson. Trying to run the down ball down. Oh that's number thirteen, excuse me. Sprague. Oh, Aaron Sprague. That name, that name's a familiar name for Mariah. Casey Bagor is out. Sarah Dupree returns. Yeah, no gold in these uniforms, no gold in the boys' uniforms. Supposed to be green and gold school colors. Where has the gold gone? Well, I got in a little trouble at the high school earlier in the year here. And uh, they had sent me a $500 bill for playing a summer soccer game on their field when they, they told me I wasn't supposed to. And the rumor is possibly that they're taking the, the gold out of the uniforms because I didn't pay the bill. <laughs> They sent me a bill, and I sent them one back. Because I, you know, I did the field up, put line down, put the nets up, used tape to hang the nets. So oh, there's Rabbit who shot. Did different things. Had players picking rocks out of the, the field because there was, they put down some good topsoil supposedly over here. It was full of rocks. And I got permission to use the field, and then uh, two days later, they seed the field. So it's a miscommunication between the people that give me permission and then the people that were actually doing the maintaining of the field. 
So we ran on the hay they had put down and played one game and they sent me a bill for over $500. Well, I sent them a bill back. Had coaches fees down there, you know, cost of the paint that I used to put on a field. What it all, the end result of it all was they owed me $13. <laughs> and I think that put an end to, to it. Yeah, they so-called uh, seeded the field over here, the JV field, the varsity field. Did it, you know, like the middle of June is when they ended up actually doing it. If you're going to see the field, I thought, you know, as early as in the, I mean, it wasn't that great of a spring, but they surely should have uh, seeded it a lot earlier. And one of the things I was told, why, the reason why, they said, well, we didn't seed it earlier because we couldn't get any hay. Well, you're over here in Ellenburg and you can't find any hay? I mean, there's something wrong. Very possible. Hay didn't grow until July. Yeah, but geez. For seeding purposes? There must have been somebody with some hay around. Not that was headed out. <laughs> There's a nice throw, Ryan Rabidou, and one timing at Sarah Dupree, but it's wide of the goal. Ryan Rabidou has a real strong throw. That's going to create some havoc for some player or for some teams this year. But you can get it into the box when they're deep in the opponent's end. Bagor. Her shot. Sophomore, junior? Ryan is a junior. Casey Begor again with another shot. Pretty junior heavy team, I believe. Darcy Rabbit, who's a senior. Who else is a senior on the team? Uh, is Kylie Felch? I'm not sure. I don't think she is. I think she's only a junior, too. Rabbit and Debbie Morrison is the other senior that I know of on the team. The rest are juniors and sophomores. What's birthday girl, sophomore? No, oh, she's a junior. She's a junior. Nicole Nephew's a junior. Angela's a junior. Sarah Dupree, April Miller, Katie McNeil, Eli Paja. We got a corner kick coming up for the Bobcat Semerall Juniors. Kara Kokenauer, she's a junior. I believe Morrison and Rabbit were the only seniors on the team. Headed by Dupree. Katie Begord trying to one time that one out of the air. Or Katie. Casey. Casey Begore. Nicole Nephew. She's out of the game. Jimmy Degas goes in, slaps her, says, Wake up. Nicole's back there talking with Debbie Morrison. And to Chase. Passes to Curry. Curry goes back to Chase, but Rabidou, Darcy Rabidou has to pick it up. Makes a couple nice moves through a couple of Vikings. And offsides called on Sarah Dupree. Yeah, well, here's a I got a time I could say hello to all my friends out there in the hometown cable area, guys I work with. There's Joe Ashline, uh, James LaFontaine, Gary Juno. You know Gary Juno? Yeah, I think he told me he goes drinking with you guys. <laughs> Cast time boys. <laughs> Drink with me. What's this Mountain Dew? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who else is there? Fredat? What's his name? Freddie Fredat? It's not, it's his first name. Ain't. It's Ron, isn't it? His wife runs the Youth Commission? Uh, I can't remember what his first name is. I think it's Ron. His son used to play for Northeastern a couple of years ago. Not Fredat? Is that his son's name? Yeah. Who else is from out that way? There's a Bertrand. He lives in Moores. There's a Todd Snyde. He lives in Moores, Ellenburg way. Sarah Dupree, shoot the ball already. What are you waiting for? Oh, see, see, these are some of the things. You're, you're able to move in and uh, and get the shot off, but even you're taking too much time there. You get to playing a tougher opponent. You better be taking the shot as soon as you get it. Well, there's a Favro that lives out there. Todd. 
Todd LaBombard. Tate Troll, the bus driver. We got a goal! I believe it was uh, Katie McNeil. I think. Don't know. We'll listen to the ref and we'll find out. I'm pretty sure that's who it looks like, anyways. Yeah, it was Katie McNeil getting the goal off the corner kick from the foot of Ryan Rabidou, or otherwise known as Rianne, if you're the seat and the announcer there. What's his name? John Wood? Jeff, right? Jeff Wood, PA. And a chase with the ball up the left side. So it's 5 to nothing here, about just under 13 minutes left in the opening half. Bill Chase, Sam Castine on hometown cable. All the action pretty much down in the Viking end of the field. And then this next half will be probably all the action right in front of us. Debbie Morrison has yet to touch the ball. She's just standing on a six-yard line. Sun has come out here this afternoon, so the weather is it's good soccer weather, actually. It's going to warm up, supposedly, sometime this weekend. But uh, their prediction of the weather, you never, never count on that five-day outlook. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> it's... If you're looking for a nice, if they, they'll tell you five days in advance. You're, you know, you listen to, well, I'm looking for Sunday, say, so to speak, to be nice. And they're telling me, yeah, it's going to be nice, it's going to be nice. By Sunday night, well, that's all changed. Mandy Chase with the ball. Sends it into the middle. Open there is Dupree, but the keeper comes out to make a nice play, Stacy Anderson. As Bobcats were storming in there. Curry. Keeping it in for the Cats. Yeah, Andre Tatro, he's the bus driver. He works out at Bear Hill. Yeah. There's a couple carpools of them guys that travel from Ross's Point in Champlain area to go out to Bear Hill and Malone and they work. They've been all on midnights for these seven, eight years now. Traveling 60 miles one way. McNeil, she's coming off the field. She's got the Cats' fifth goal. She's played JVs last year, first year on varsity, so that's got to make her feel good to score a goal in your first game of the regular season. Hey, Marson wants another one. <laughs> is, she want, is she yelling out there? We want another one. <laughs> and five's not enough. Sprague trying to move the ball up. Chase can't stop her. Sprague still with the ball. She's deep in Bobcat territory. Coming into the box. A shot. It's off the foot of Nicole Nephew and out of bounds. It's a corner kick. Morrison did not touch the ball there. Nephew saying, you're not going to touch it. And Morrison should have called her off if she wanted it. but That's what happens in these games. Look at Reagan's out there yawning. Reagan's yawning. He's the official. Krista, what's her name? Uh, Jubert, one of the ball girls here. Uh, Brian Bouye's uh, younger daughter, uh, Elizabeth Bouye, the national anthem singer. Casey Begore, off to the corner kick, races down the left side. It's a two-on-two -two break. Begore has some speed. She goes inside. Chill after the ball. Uh -oh. oh, just missing it. And I believe the goalie must have got a piece of it because it's a corner kick. Begore hustling all the way down. Anderson came out. Stopped the ball. Five-nothing here. Under ten minutes now. Left in the first half. Rabidou. Looking for Felch. Felch steps over the ball, falls down, and gets back up. Looks to go inside. The Vikings trying to clear it. Felch hustling in there, keeping the ball in for the Cats. She finds Rabidou. Rabidou finds Casey Bagor. Bagor puts it in on the goalie. And Anderson moving from, or what was she moving from? Her right to her left? Or left to her right? Left to her right. Makes the save. Yeah. 
Okay, Kokenauer with the ball. Had a chance to shoot it. But it's blocked. Rabidou hustle it up to make the keep the ball in. Rabidou goes to her left foot. Into the middle. Ball oh wide open. <laughs> Scoots through Anderson and everybody else. It was two, three bobcats right there on the left side. But unable to put it into the wide open goal. So the score remains five nothing. Northern out of round deck. Lady Bobcats. Here in the first half, the first game of the regular season for the Cats. Cats could, should, uh, could and should, actually should contend for the Division II title. Tupper Lake is in the Division II. Also, Ticonderoga, Mariah is in Division II, Osable Valley, and Saranac Lake. Tupper, Tupper Lake, uh, and NAC played three close games last year. All I believe the scores were all either, I think they were all two to one ball games. Tupper prevailed in all three. And actually, the last one being the championship for Section Seven Class C title. NAC was right there, right with them, but uh, Tupper Lake just seemed to get the breaks. And the Cats are looking to get some revenge. McNeil open on the right side using her left foot. See, them girls are too willing to use the left foot. That time, maybe she should have used her right. <laughs> Bobcats uh, girls program this year. First time having a JV girls. Uh, I think Tracy Rabidou, who uh, helps Brian here. As is his or her, his assistant, Amanda Chase, making a nice play there. Is the coach for the modified team? They started out on the on the 25th, only had 11 girls, but since school started, picked up seven more. So there's 18, and 18 is a good number. So they've got a modified JV and varsity teams here at Northern Adirondack in girls soccer. Also modified JV and varsity boys. For modified boys, it's their second year. They went 11 and 0 last year. Northeastern starting a modified program. I believe girls and boys. Pretty much every school around the area now with modified programs for soccer. Anyways, Saranac. Uh, for some reason, they can they can uh, put out like two modified boys teams, but then uh, their JV and varsity numbers have not been up there. Hustling in there is Bagor. It's rattled off her and one of the Viking defenders. Bagor does have some speed. Where in Saranac you talking about? Saranac, yeah. For some reason, they've, they've had team. They've had teams down there of modified two teams of modified boys. I think. Oh, don't they have football? Yeah, they got football and. Oh, that cuts into a lot of it. It cuts into soccer, I guess. But oh, you yeah. would think that. If you got two teams of modified boys, you should be able to. I know last year your, your brother he only had like what maybe 15 on his JV team. And the varsity numbers were down too. Chase with the ball. I think they're bigger into football. Yeah, well, they might be bigger into football, but their success at football hasn't been hasn't been there. And actually, I believe Saranac, two years in a row, has been in the championship game for Section 7 Class E uh, Boy soccer. Now, is Northeastern back to a C this year, bro? Yeah, Northeastern is back to a C from what I understand. So, uh, NAC and Northeastern should be battling it out for that sectional title. There is some NAC parents, they've already got their reservations down there <laughs> in the, for the state for the final four. Bobcats have gone to the Final Four the last two years in a row, and yeah, you know, there's some parents on that team. They're a, a cocky bunch. What happens if you don't make it? I don't know. I guess. Get their back? I guess they go down for a vacation. <laughs> Maybe they go down and cheer on uh, if it's Northeastern. Maybe they'll go down and cheer them on. <laughs> Kara Kokenauer now at the ball. 
We're down a 350 left here in the opening half. Five to nothing. Bobcat scoring three goals in the first five minutes. They've added a couple more. Darcy Rabbit who has two. Kylie Felch has one. Katie McNeil one. And April Miller one. Aaron LeBear hustling over there for the Bobcats. She runs the ball down, goes back to Curry. Curry moves to her left. Puts the ball back on her right foot. Looking across. And a chase coming in. She does cross it. Chase picks up the loose ball, tries to send it in the middle. Goes off on a Viking player, out of bounds. Corner kick coming up for the Bobcats. One nice thing, Bill, I don't think we'll have overtime tonight. No, no, no overtime here tonight. That's good. I got to go home. I scheduled Mike's practice. I'm coaching a Mike team up there. I see that schedule. See what in the schedule? What schedule? We got a schedule of all. Uh, oh. Yeah. Line Mountain team. Last year we were we were the what were we, the big dogs? I think we were last year. It was the Line Mountain Big Dogs. Every year we change the name at soccer. It's not Line Mountain Miners. The Miners that's baseball and softball. Well, we go, this year? We're the Line Mountain Roar. 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 <laughs> We've got the shirt made up. It's got Line Mountain soccer on it, and the ball looks like it's going into the back of a net. I hope there's gold on the uniforms. Oh, there's gold on the uniforms. The old Lime Mountain colors we got this year. Maroon and gold. Gold lettering. I got a lion on there. There they all thought, well, I, it's a cartoon lion. I'm going to put on there. And uh, all the kids thought, well, we're going to be the Lime Mountain Lions. And I fixed them. I said, nope, we're not the lions. We're the roar. They go, the roar? We weren't the big dogs last year. We were the hound dogs is what we were. And we used to have, I used to say, well, I mean, you're a hound, what's a hound dog do? And they all, they'd all howl prior to the game. So this year we're going to roar before the game. The Lime Mountain Roar. We got to travel to, you got to bring the camera. You got to play Altona. They got three teams in Altona, Mites. Allenberg's got two teams. Soccer, big sport. So there's 50 might teams in the county. There's a shot by Ryan Rabidou and Anderson makes the save. Anderson's punt. It's off the head of uh, Sarah Dupree. He goes back to Chase. Chase is going to hustle in there on Sprague. Sprague can't get by Chase and Felch. Felch come over to help Chase. Felch looking to go inside. Amanda Chase keeping the ball in. She's on the goal line and cleared by the Viking defense. Down under a minute here left in the first half. Yeah, my roar. We open up over here to Saturday morning. We're playing uh, the Ellenberg. I don't know which team. Schedule worked out to my favor. I got four home games and two away games. <laughs> Six games? I only play six games. Six Saturdays. Curry with a shot and scores. So the Cats scoring early in the first half, and now they've scored late. It's six to nothing. Angela Curry. They've scored two goals on corner on plays that started on corner kicks. Five different goal scorers here. Darcy Rabideau with two goals. Angela Curry, Kylie Felch, April Miller, and Katie McNeil, the other goal scorers. There's 26 seconds left in the half. Eight from 22. 22 is Ryan Rabideau, I believe, and picking up her second assist, at least that I can remember. And the crowd was just so exuberant when they scored. I mean, she's... Six-nothing here. And we're winding down the opening half for the Lady Bobcats. Here are the 1997 CVAC regular season's underway. They're counting it down. Sam Castine built chase on hometown cable. Your ultimate high school sports network here in Clinton County will be back for your second half action. And we hope it'll all be right here in front of us. Six nine. I didn't see what happened, but at the end of the first half, this gal here <laughs> apparently got hurt, 
and uh, we're holding up play because I believe they are now called for an ambulance. The ambulance has arrived from Ellenberg Center. They have loaded her into the ambulance. I don't I couldn't get a number on her, so I don't know who the young gal is, but she is being loaded been loaded into the ambulance and will be heading to the hospital, I would imagine. Elizabeth. <laughs> okay, we're back here. We had a delay because of a girl getting injured at the end of the first half and they had to call the ambulance, take her off the field. That was about a fifteen minute to 20 minute break here. Mm. Well, was it? It's a half hour break and Cats with a 6 nothing lead over the Mariah Vikings. That's the Lady Bobcats that is. Here on Hometown Cable, Bill Chase, Sam Castine. I figured I'd be out of here in plenty of time to get home for might practice. I scheduled for 6.30. Now I'm going to have to leave. I have to find my daughter a ride home. I'm not a happy camper, so to speak. Bobcats goal scored two by Darcy Rabideau, one by uh, Kylie Feltz, one by April Miller, Katie McNeil, and who was the other one? I forgot now. Feltz, Miller, McNeil, Darcy Rabideau. I don't know. If we think of it, we'll tell you. Kara Kokenauer now at the ball on the left side. Kokenauer moving around a Viking defender. Kokenauer moving and trying to put the ball in the middle of the field. She follows it up, regains control, goes back to Aaron LaBear. LaBear tries to put the ball in the middle. Curry were trying to run it down. Curry's cross. McNeil runs that down. McNeil goes to Dupree. Dupree left foot shot over the goal line. Goal kick coming up. Let me see that Bobcat lineup. Okay. I'm going to have to leave here. I schedule might practice at 6.30 in Lime Mountain. It's at least a 15 minute drive from here. Oh, Angela Curry was the other goal scorer for the Bobcats. Curry, normally playing back on fullback or in the halfback position, moved up, scored. I believe it was a six goal. About 26 seconds left and a half. And sometime between that last goal and time expiring, that girl got hurt. Laid in the middle of the field here at midfield. Till the ambulance picked her up. Miller making some nice moves. Pushes the ball down the right side for the Cats. Prime yeah, Debbie Morrison, the cat keeper, has yet to touch the ball. Stacy Anderson has made a couple nice saves. Actually, it could be a wider margin here. Miller with the ball. She's got to shoot it. She does, and it's over the top of the goal. Miller getting underneath that. She's got to lift that foot up, point the toe down, and hit the top part of the ball. Is that going to leave the area? Nope. We got a re kick. Kara Kokenauer hustling in there. There's one of them rules of soccer. The ball has got to leave the all free kicks. Doesn't matter if it's a goal kick. All free kicks that are take place within the penalty area have to leave the area before either team can play them. Now if the girl that runs out and the girl that takes the kick inside the penalty area she kicks it outside the area and then runs up and plays it again. It's going to be a indirect for the other team. They had an offsides call. Katie McNeil. And Coach Boye, he's getting a couple of his girls that are currently waiting to get into the game. Chasing down a ball. A couple of JV players are using down on the might field. At least I think it's a might field. Where the, where the heck's the other net? 
I don't see another net over there. April Miller, good left foot. Puts it in, Viking defense, clears it back up midfield. Sprague with the ball. It was Johnson blocking that pass by Miller. And a chase. Looking for Dupree. Okay, number 14, McDougal. Tried to move it up. Cats. No possession on the far side of the field with a throw in. 35 minutes left here in this exciting game of soccer here on Hometown Cable. One of the thousand events a year seen on Hometown. I hear you guys already played some of them soccer games from the Seton Tournament. That's kind of quick, ain't it? Well, we caught up a lot of stuff. Caught up. So, hometown cable, a little low in the in between seasons. <laughs> Able to get them games on already that were played just last weekend. Yeah, and a couple guys from work say, oh, we heard you on hometown, Chase. Oh, nice ball. Kara Kokenauer. Oh, she stops it. Johnson now picks up that ball. She sends it up the right side. Nice ball by April Miller to Kokenauer. She couldn't get either foot on it. Kokenauer trying to get around Johnson. That's picked up by uh, Slattery. Slattery now at the ball. Hits Aaron LeBaire and out of bounds right in front of our position. Sprague with the throw in. April Miller picks the ball up off to the throw in. Makes a nice move. Goes to her left. Outside to Curry. Curry goes out of bounds with the ball. Ball hopped up on her. And Sprague will take the throw in. Sprague looking for uh, Gajewski. <laughs> Is that how you said that? Oh. Gajewski. Uh, I don't know exactly how it was pronounced. Oh, that's close enough. And a chase. Using her right foot, trying to put it down the left wing. Kicks it out of bounds. Slattery with the throw. Aaron LeBaire gets it up to Kokenauer. Kokenauer trying to go to the middle. But that's cleared. 6 nothing lead here, and the Cats pretty much uh, got it sewed up. Lady Bobcats opening up the regular season here at home against the Mariah Vikings. Angela Curry has tripped up by Sprague. And I believe that it might be the first. No, I don't think so. We've only had maybe, that's the second direct kick in this game. Not a real physical game. Yeah, I think she tripped over the midfield line. McNeil, see this is one thing that's bad about this game. The Bobcats, I mean, uh, are they're standing there that time, Katie McNeil waiting for the ball. Just the, the intensity and everything is just gone. I think the Cats play, they move the ball a lot better against Shattagay and Seton. Okay, Kylie Felch is in the game. Felch making a move. Looking to go inside. Uh, cleared up. Gajewski trying to go by Curry. She gets it outside to uh, McDougal. Dougal almost losing the ball to Curry, but picks it back up. Cross midfield into the Bobcat end. Nicole Nephew there. Ball stays in bounds. McDougal now takes it back from Nephew. Take it, moves to her right. Crosses in the middle. And Darcy Rabideau clears it up. 
Patricia King trying to keep it in for the Vikings. King will run down the ball. She's on the left side. King hustling there. Can't keep the ball in. Bobcat throwing in the far corner. 30 minutes left here. 6 nothing. The Bobcats on top. Bill Chase, Sam Castine for Hometown Cable. Remember, if you get a chance or you, to uh, patronize all the Hometown Cable sponsors. And if you want to be a sponsor yourself, all you got to do is, what's the donation? Hmm? Is there a certain amount? $12 or more a year. $12 a year or more and you become, become uh, what is it, what do you call them? A viewer patron. And they put your name on the screen, don't you? Yeah. And run them all down. Yeah. Hometown Cable covers Northern Adirondack Bobcats, the Shazy Eagles, Beatman Town Eagles, and of course the Northeastern Clinton Cougars. A lot of high school sports. Got basketball and wrestling in the winter. Tara Kokenauer wide open there and she's got to turn the ball. A little bit more to her right that time. She, get the, she kicked it off her toe, I believe. Kokenauer with the ball. Casey Begore kicking it. But it goes up in Mariah's favor. Ryan Rabidou rattles that off in Sprague. Moves around Sprague now. Nice move by Rabidou. Nice ball dumped into the open area here on the left wing. Johnson kicks it out of bounds for the Vikings. The Vikings, uh, short on numbers. The young team here. Oh, nice throw in by Rabidou. McGore. She's off the post. <laughs> Just touching the ball. She's jumping up and down, and the play isn't over. Her and uh, Jamie Decos going, oh, oh. It's the post. Debbie Morrison down, way down in the other end net now. Nobody even around her. Nobody to talk to. She dove once. Thought she was going to touch the ball, but Nicole Nephew stepped in front of that. The ball went out of bounds. It was a corner kick for Mariah. That was in the first half. Casey Begore is coming out. I can believe Coach Boye wants to talk to her about, you know, celebrating before the ball goes in the net. Okay, the Bobcats with the ball on the far side of the field. Down to 27 minutes or so left in this contest. 6 nothing lead. Story of the second half thus far is the Vikings have kept the Bobcats off the scoreboard for <laughs> 13 minutes. Uh-oh, Kokenauer. Oh, she gets it away from uh, the keeper, Stacy Anderson. But being backed up by her defense, they clear it out. Nicole Nephew. Darcy McDougal moving it down the left side. McDougal has shown some spurts here in his second half. Speed and hustle. Actually, the longer I watch this uh, Mariah team, the more impressed I'm becoming with them because uh, they do have some talent out there. They just don't, uh, you know, I don't think they got the numbers to support each other. I think this is a team that, as the season goes on, the better they're going to get. As long as they stick with it, don't lose their confidence. Later on in the year, you never know, they could upset a team or two. And, of course, they play in Section D when they get into playoffs. And it always helps them out. It has in the past couple of years, especially in soccer. Go against the Section D schools and... 
playing section B or, or you're playing D and or C and B schools and you can play D for the playoffs. That surely helps you out. The tougher opponents. Give and go. Rabidou for Miller. Rabidou looking for the other Rabidou. Sprague now running in there. And Darcy Rabidou, she shields her off. Nice play there. Gets it up to big Kara Kokenauer and out of bounds. Well, Sam, looks like I'm about ready to leave you here. And I thought I'd seen another goal by now. Can't leave till Mariah scores. Well, I'd be here the rest of the day and then some, I think. White subs coming in. Ryan Louise. Liz Slattery passing it. Ryan Rabidou gets it up. But Johnson to the head. Felch to the left foot. She's going to score. Yeah, Felch sliding down using the left foot. And Anderson. Unable to stop that. Makes it 7 nothing. So Felch has two goals. Rabideau has two goals. So there. Now I've seen the seventh goal in the first goal in the second half. There's exactly... They haven't stopped the clock. No, they did. No, they didn't. That's all right. Don't say anything. <laughs> the clock is still running. I think it's one of them things even the officials don't care about. So... Running time, second half. Running time in the second half and about 24 minutes on the clock. Felch makes it 7 nothing. This is Bill Chase. I'm going to turn it over to Sam Castine. I've got Mike practice in Lion Mountain. Remember, it's the Lion Mountain Roar. Be coming at you, you Altona and Ellenberg people. <laughs> you hear a big roar on a Saturday morning. It's just my kids looking to wake you up in the neighborhood. So here you go, Sam. I'll be back here on hometown of Tomorrow night, I'll go into the boys' varsity game in Peru. I don't know if any one of you guys are going. No. Nope. Well, I'll do that game for you. Okay. All right. Well, our thanks to Bill Chase. We'll try to continue on now. Twenty-two minutes to go in the game. Bobcats with a 7-0 lead. Now the game's pretty over with. I don't know who's who out there. The Vikings working it back. I don't think uh, Morrison has touched the ball yet. This could be the first time in the game. No. Uh, it's going to be a goal kick for the Bobcats. Darcy Rabbit will take the goal kick. And it's going to be a toss in for the Vikings. Vikings with a toss in, broken up by the Cats. Rabideau pushes it up ahead. It'll be out of bounds, but it'll be a red toss. I believe that was Curry giving chase.
Picked up by McNeil. Pushed up ahead. And that's going to go out of bounds for a corner kick. Corner kick by the Cats. And that's pushed towards net. Vikings come out with it. Chase. Pushes it towards center. Cleared back out by the Vikings. Cats bring it right back in. Shot. Oop. Picked up by Anderson. In the six. Kept in by the Cats. Shot pushed back. And we're going to have a goal kick. We want to thank Bill for all the games he tapes for us. He does a good job for us. That's out of bounds. He'll be doing quite a few of the cat games that we can't always get to. Of course, we'd, Bill wasn't here, we'd try to find somebody else to do them, but Bill has covered a number of them for us. And he's looking to head downstate for the final four again this year. Oh, back and forth action here. It's going to be a white toss. White again, I believe. but, excuse me, Anderson has it. <coughs> Anderson pushes it out towards midfield. The Vikings get it back into the cat zone. Rabidou battle. No, it wasn't Rabidou. Number three, that's Miller, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hockenhauer gets it stripped away, pushed back towards midfield. We're down to 15 minutes to go in the game. Cats lead it 7-0. Push it out towards center. We have the truck over on this far end for the simple reason is if we put it in midfield we're blocked out by the scorekeeper's booth and if we're just off to one side of it we're blocked out as, as it is now we can't get that far corner up here. This is why we have to tape here from one end of the field. It's going to be who's toss? White I believe. White push called, a red direct kick. They had blown the whistle for substitutes, but there was no substitution for, it was supposed to be a Mariah sub, and there was no one there from the Mariah team. Now we got a young lady coming in. 
I think she almost ought to take your sweatshirt off. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a goal change. That's what we got. Right. Well, they're saying, come on, Jamie, so it looks like Jamie Trapasso. Subs for the cats. Vikings working it back towards net. Morrison's still looking to touch it for the first time. Eleven fifty to go. <laughs> and Jamie Morrison has not touched the ball yet in this game. It was close one time, but the defender got a foot on it and cleared it out. This could be a corner kick for the Vikings. This could be Morrison's first time with the ball. Nope. Cleared out by the Cats. I think it was Rabideau who got a foot on it. White ball. Harley Begore back into the game for the Cats, number 14. Oh, white toss. Sarah Dupuy headed in, number four. She replaced uh, Ryan Rabidou. Again, it'll be white toss. White ball again. Shot, rolls wide, goal kick. Battle. Ball's pushed up to Kokenhauer. Goal kick, I think. Goal kick is taken by the, the goalie. Trapasso. Tranpasso. Shot. Uh, the goalie's got it. <clears throat> Cats picking up six goals in the first half, only able to muster up one in the second half. Rabideau working it in towards the 18. Cleared back out by the Vikings. Pushed up ahead, Kokenhauer. Ball rolls out of bounds. Sarah Dupuy will toss in. That's going to go over the top for a goal kick. Johnson takes the goal kick. I think it's Trapasso is how you pronounce uh, the goalie's name. If it isn't, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. <laughs> Morrison.
horse and say, let me touch it, let me touch it. I'm sure she'll be tested more than this before the season's over with, though. Red toss. Wow. A rabbit call with the charge. That's Ryan. Gonna be a red ball. Shot goes wide. Cats clear it, but taken right back by the Vikings. We're under five to go in the game. Holy cow! With four minutes and 37 seconds that was left. Deb Morrison catch the ball for the first time in the game. And again with the goal kick. Kept in by Kokenhauer. Ah, Kokenhauer's number 10. We're going to have another goal kick. Trapasso will take the goal kick this time. Let's put it right back. Woo! Nice save. I gotta be a goal kick. Chaprasso again taking the goal kick. Pushed up by the cats. Out of bounds. Off Kokenhauer. Out of bounds. It'll be a bike and toss. We got an even two minutes to go in the game. Pushes it up ahead to du du Dupuy. Shot! Capasso with the save. Bounces it off. A Viking player. Out for Chase. Chase pushes it towards the 18. Shot over the top. We'll have another goal kick for the Vikings. We're down to about 40 seconds remaining in the game. Trapasso takes the kick, the goal kick. Kept in by the Cats. <clears throat> 
You know, the red tossing. We got the countdown. We're down to six seconds. And the NAC Bobcats have defeated the Mariah Vikings and Girls Varsity Action by a score of seven to nothing. Six goals coming in the first half, and the Cats picking up one in the second. Final score, the Bobcats, seven. Vikings of Mariah, zero. Till next time, good night, everyone. This is Calvin Castein. We're at Northeastern Clinton Central School. It's the 11th day of September 1997, the 183rd anniversary of the Battle of Plattsburgh. And we're here for the Battle of CVAC Varsity Soccer Teams, the Lady Cougars and the Lady Indians from Peru. <clears throat> Quickly for the Cougars, coached by Josie Gilroy, Megan Casey is number one, <clears throat> Adriana Moroni is two. Elise LaFountain is three, Ashley Walter four, Heather Bower six, Ashley Burt seven, Sarah Bayshard eight, the repeats ten. Stacey Miller is eleven, Christy Favreau twelve, Lisa Robert thirteen, Brandy Sample fourteen, Erica LaFountain sixteen, Marie Boris eighteen, Nicole Tardiff twenty, Rachel Dutail twenty one, Haley Desserel twenty two, Debbie Trombley twenty three, Amanda Clark twenty four, and the goalkeeper is my good friend Heather Snide. For the Peru Indians, Kathleen McCool is number one, Jasmine Giroux is number two, Eileen Grobecker is number three, Therese Delora is number four, Carly Mayette is number five, Melissa Fulton is number six, Angela Perez is number seven, Sarah Mincer is number eight, Jessica Rock number nine, cousin Ruth Hamilton is number ten, Brooke Mayette is number eleven, Ashley Rock number twelve, Christy Dupree is in the scoring booth. She's the usual goalie. She's out with an injured ankle. Nikki Vitti is number 14. Megan Dodge is 15. Vanessa Garcia, 16. Aaron Campbell, 17. Becky Joseph, 18. Kelly DeRocher, 19. Jessica Lyons is 20. Sarah Titherington is 21. Christina Vitti is number 23. And Doreen Boynton is the starting goalie tonight. Referees are Steve Regan and Todd Lambert. Todd Lambert. Game getting started approximately 4:45. Uh, originally scheduled for 5:30. Games here at Northeastern are usually at 6:30, but uh, for the past six, seven years since Cougars got the lights in, Peru has declined to play at the 6:30 start time. That'd be a white throw-in, but a misty rain falling. I hope it doesn't come into our lens here. And